Hi, I'm Claire and this is my husband Nick. We met in an online chat room in 2001 and ended up getting married in 2006. We're a fairly normal, hard-working couple who love travelling and enjoying a drink or two. In early 2020, we decided we wanted a whole new life-changing challenge. So we said goodbye to our jobs. We sold our Wiltshire farmhouse we packed up our things and made the move to France. In early 2001, I went back to the UK to finalise our house sale and pick up my Arga. I was on Facebook on an Escape to the Chateau fan club page when I saw this advert. I messaged Nick the advert, curiosity got the better of him and he went and arranged a viewing. With the instructions from me, I trust your judgement, if you think I'll like it, put in an offer. The offer was accepted and we finally got the keys on the 10th of June 2021. Join us and our dogs Merlo and Flora as we renovate our Maison de Maitre. So I'm in the former laundry and uh, we're turning this into a kind of like a little jeet. Um, there's a lot to do in here. Um, we have come quite a long way already, um, but there's a lot to do. Um, so I'm going to divide my time between some work in here and some work in the main house, um, and, and sort of gently ease this project forward. So the first job I'm going to do, um, I, a few weeks ago, had pulled the electric cable back to the correct position. Um, so now I'm going to put some plasterboard on that wall which will allow me to fit the consumer unit into the wall. Um, when I've done that then I can start getting all the cabling across the building to sockets and where lights are going to be. Um, once all the cabling is in place then we can get on and insulate and dry plasterboard line the, the walls in here. Quite a lot to do. So, got to start sometime, and that time is now. Free spider with every purchase. And there we have it. Well, <laughs> nothing wide in, but the box is fitted. So, uh, yeah, I think it looks quite smart as well. So I have my um, electrician due to come back within the next month. Um, he'll get that wide in for me. Um, up through the Maison de Maitre and the electric supply. Um, so in the meantime I will start wiring in where we're going to have sockets and things. Anyway for now, jobs are good. It's about four o'clock and we've decided to come to the beach. Um, the reason why we've come to the beach is we're going to spoil the doggies. Yay! <laughs> Even more than they're already spoilt. So yeah, we're bringing the kids out for a walk on the beach. Um, dogs are not allowed on certain beaches in France from, when is it? March till September. March till September. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're coming out. Now for... it's October. Yay! Gonna go for a walk in the beach, aren't you? And you? Yay! Yay! Yay. Don't know. We're at the beach. Merlo. Merlo, you happy dog? Have you found a rock pool? Happy 
Happy Dogs. Did we enjoy that, Flora, Merlo? How was it? Did you like that? It's quarter to seven at night and we're in a Brico shop. And I think we've been in here for about an hour and a half now to the point where I actually even have Flora with me in the Brico shop and you're being very well behaved, aren't you? If we ever make it out of here alive, I'll be really happy. We'd reached the point where we had finally agreed on um, a kitchenette for our wash house sheet, but unfortunately, they're discontinuing the colour. <laughs> it's back to the drawing board. You love Brico shops, don't I you, do, baby girl? I do. Oh, <laughs> she does. She does. Look at her. She's losing the wall to live too. Right. right. Get out of here. So I'm back in the sheet and I'm going to run some electric cabling to and from the consumer unit to where I'm going to be putting power sockets. Um, but before I do that, because I've got quite so much plasterboard that I bought and I haven't done anything with, I'm actually going to put some of it on the wall. Um, to just use it up and get it out of the way. Now I started by lining around the window here so I've done the four pieces around the window and now I'm going to cut a kind of a, a C shape um, to go from there to halfway across the window and then another piece in reverse to finish off over there. Um, once I put some more insulation in the wall there, I'll be able to fit those two pieces up. Um, and then that will be that wall finished. So uh, that will be two pieces of plasterboard I don't need to keep moving around. Because the more I move it, the more it's going to get damaged. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm doing now. So I've just cut this sheet of plasterboard and uh, offered it up and it seems to be um, good for the, the space that it's going into. Um, I just need to put a bit more insulation behind it and then I can screw that to the framework and then that is that wall lined. Um, so yeah, getting there slowly but I'm getting there. It's another wonderful day here in the Chamont Maritime. It's lovely and sunny. Um, and yeah, I've decided to do an inside job today. So I am in the sausage factory area in our side of the house. And I've been walking past here for weeks. And it's been really annoying me because when you move house, you've got boxes. And in our case, we've not necessarily got the cupboard space that we once had and we've not really got anywhere to put these boxes. But I want to keep the stuff that's in them for when we do have things like a large kitchen, um, places to put these this kind of stuff. So when we moved in, all of my kitchen boxes came into this room and over the last year... I've watched these boxes as they just kind of like twist and compact down and it's actually a little bit depressing. Um, so what I'm going to do over the next couple of days, I want to go through all of my boxes. Um, I want to see what's in them um, and I want to pull out stuff that I actually 
want to use again <laughs> and then I'm going to repack it um, and then I'm going to kind of make it more organized and more better rather than just a massive pile of boxes so it's quite quite horrific at the moment but here goes so here is the pile of boxes and it runs the whole length of the back wall and the boxes are about two boxes deep now some of the boxes are structurally sound and others they're just starting to like twist and compact and yeah i'm just not very happy and there's things that i'd like to find in here um and there's things that can be like distributed around the house that we can actually use in here now before i start this i am going to let you into a little secret <laughs> when i was packing some of these boxes um i still had the pub and I'd go to work at the pub and I'd come home late at night and I'd have a couple of glasses of wine and I'd pack boxes. So in some of these boxes, I know that when I'd had a couple of glasses of wine, I've put like surprise presents for myself in here, like boxes of tea, um, things like that. But also when we were back in England, I had uh, a a nice little car called a Toyota uh, GT86 ah. and um, before we came over to France I ex part exchanged it for my truck however somewhere in all of these boxes or in the boxes that we have upstairs is a set of GT86 keys it's been two years since we left England and if I do ever find the key for the car I always said that I would post it back to the dealer <laughs> so you never know this week may be the week where I find the keys or not So today I've been back in the uh, laundry in the bathroom area where I had done boxing on this wall with plasterboard yesterday and today I've been working on this wall which um, I've had to add some more metal work because I hadn't done enough of that originally um, which I've now done and I've started putting plasterboard around the window um, I can't really do too much on this wall because this is where the toilet and the basin are going. We've got the toilet, but we haven't got the basin yet. And I haven't got any of the pipe, the waste pipe work in for there. And the other thing I need to do is drill a hole through the wall here um, and put uh, a cable through there because that is where one of the outside lights is going to be going through. So I can get that hole drilled. Um, I think I've reached a point now where I'm going to just start getting wiring in place um yeah yeah so that's three holes through the wall that's uh wire through and the ducting and connect it all together inside. Right well that's it for the day and I'm pleased with where I've got to. I've got the three outside lights not wired into the actual light fittings but the cables all through the wall and they're all joined together, they're linked to a switch and the cable goes back to the consumer unit. So that's a good job done. I've also got then the supply coming through for the uh, light switch uh, and fittings in the bedroom area. So, uh, yeah, making progress. Pleased. I fast forward to a couple of hours later and this is the, this is the, the keep I've gone through and sorted pile. And then the rest of the room is just, nah. 
Um, it's taken a bit longer than expected. Um, I'm having to throw away some of the boxes because when I'm picking them up, they are just actually collapsing with all of the stuff in them. Um, which isn't fun when it lands on your feet and when it's glass. So I'm just going to keep going for another hour or two and then just call it quits for today. It's nice to see my kitchen stuff again, but it's like, well, I want to put it in a cupboard. Some of the interesting bits that I obviously purchased for myself is, is gifts for unboxing boxes. <laughs> I found this lovely outdoor clock that I bought in England. Still not found the car keys. Don't know whether I ever will. Out in the van on this lovely autumnal morning, and the first stop is where? <laughs> the dishettery. The dishettery, the tip, woohoo! Brico shop number one of the day, happy to report all of the seats are down. A closed seat is a happy seat. So we've just done Brico shop number one of the day and <laughs> I like how you're laughing. Well, not a very successful trip. We saw two bathroom heated towels that we wanted neither of them in stock so can we order them no can we have the display model no <laughs> one's there but actually none of them fit so we couldn't just choose a different one so now we're playing ping pong between the brico shops and of course what's happened it's hit 12 o'clock so it's lunchtime everything shuts we decided to stop for lunch and now we are on our way to Brico shop number two of the day. Stop number one, plasterboard for the wash house. This is just for my mother-in-law. I wanted to let you know that I talked Nicholas into getting the premium wall insulation for the Jeet for when you come and stay, so you may be fractionally warmer. He wanted the cheaper stuff. I said no, no expense spared for my mother-in-law. Brownie points. So for the bathroom in the wash house, Nick was thinking of just having a towel rail. And I said, no, that's not good enough. That's not good enough for my mother-in-law. We're having a heated towel rail. Look at that mother-in-law. 500 watts of pure heat just for you. Next thing to order is this sink vanity unit. So there's lots of places and lots of drawers and lots of space to put things but I'm not going for it in white. I have decided to go for it in this gray color. So this is the kitchen that we were going to get in gray, but it's out of stock. This is my next choice of kitchen. I like the cabinets on it, even though we'll only have one glass fronted cabinet. I just, I think the color of the wood's quite nice. Um, the only thing that I don't like about it don't like the worktops and yes you've got a choice of worktops but I think with all of these worktops where they're really like plasticky someone's going to take a knife to them and then absolutely bugger them up so oh, I don't know I think I'm gonna go grey a decision has been made here I'm gonna go with the grey kitchen from the other shop, but I am gonna go with this as the worktop rather than something that's like M2 
MDF, laminated and just khaki. So, decisions. Look here, mother-in-law, I got you the finest new oven. Here you go, mother, here's your sink. <laughs> Kitchen tap. When I said I wanted a hoodie. You have an extractor hoodie. <laughs> Yes, dear. I've got something for you. It's my loose screw. <laughs> when you've been in a brick house shop for this long, it really is the little things. This kitchen, this is the kitchen that we're going to have. This is the kitchen that is currently going into the trolley. We have made another decision. And Nick's just passed wind and nearly killed some poor Frenchman that walked past that actually commented on the smell. <laughs> <laughs> it was hideous. It's ten to six and we are finally on our way home. We have now been out for how many hours? Seven. 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 Yeah. And we, we have a van load of things. And our poor little doggies, they're gonna think that we went to the beach or somewhere without them. <laughs> They're going to be more horrified, aren't they? Yeah, I'm going to tell them that's what we meant. What mean? So, we went shopping and have bought kitchen and bathroom fittings for the Jeet, which I've uh, temporarily put in uh, this in-between area for, for storage out the way. Um, what I am going to do this morning, however, is just assemble the bathroom unit. Uh, just want to stand it in the bathroom um, with the radiator and things, just double check all the spacing. Um, once I'm happy and once Claire's happy with all of that, then um, we can make sure I get the power supply in the right place for the radiator and then get the, uh, the tap and waste supplies um, to the basin in the right place. Right, well I finished the assembly of this, apart from, dun, dun, dun. Oh, well I've got the handle but it's got no bolt. Um, so apart from that, the unit is complete and actually, generally speaking, it's not bad quality. Now obviously I haven't fitted a tap because there's no need, I haven't fitted the waist because there's no need, at least now I can measure the actual unit and get all the pipes in the wall in the right place so for now that can carry on living in here and i'm quite pleased with that job done i'm just cutting a hole for the extractor fan that's going in the ceiling that's better It'll be able to take that plate off when we're painting the ceiling in here. Um, I'll put it up there just to keep it out of the way, keep it safe. Connect the ducting upstairs, which will take it to uh, any moisture or, feet or smells away to the outside world. The next job um, is to fit the three ceiling down lights that we've got for this room. Um, so I've just marked centre line down the middle of the room. One over the middle of the shower and the other two spaced nicely over this part, so... Three holes. Um, I've got 
three down lights, three transformers. I'm just going to wire these in. I'm not going to fit the down lights because um, well, I haven't painted the ceiling. And I find with these things, every time you pull them down, it damages the plasterboard and eventually they start drooping down. So I'm going to wire in these and then it's just a push fit connection to get the, the light fitting connected. So these are all being ready above the ceiling, um, waiting for final decoration and then wash. There we have it, job done. Hello. So I'm happy to report that after two and a half days of work, I have finally organized and sorted the sausage factory um it's nice to see kind of the floor again <laughs> so i've gone through all of the boxes i've reorganized them i've made sure that none of them are collapsing and ruining the stuff underneath in one another um which i'm really happy about and it's all condensed now it's not spilling out across the room in one corner of the room um i've put some shelving in here so that if I want anything, I can just come and get it. Because the kitchen in our side of the house is really tiny. Um, and there's nowhere to put anything. So at least I can walk through here, pick up something I want, take it through into the kitchen, use it, bring it back. And there's a place for it. And I've cleaned and sorted our stockpile of English goodies. Woohoo! Now, yep. It's not the ideal solution for all of this. I am looking forward to the future when in here is a kitchen and there's no more boxes and it's working and I can have like places to put things and oh, it'll be so good. But for the moment, it's organised, it's out of the way, it's not spilling into the room anymore. And I know that the stuff isn't breaking, so good couple of days work, I'm pleased. Hi. Hi! Welcome to Wine of the Week! Well, I think that we've had a really productive week, especially shopping wise. <laughs> I don't think I need to go to a Brico shop for a little while. Apart from I need some clips. <laughs> <laughs> I need wine. <laughs> well, this week the wine is a little bit different. Um, bought it when my mum and dad were over um, in the summer or earlier on in the year, and there was a wine fair we, we went to without Claire. And um, amongst the wines, I bought two bottles of this, which, ah. which is um, a wine from the Basque region in the Pyrenees. Um, it is French, it's a couple of, couple of miles away from the Spanish border. Um, an organic wine, they've got a couple of hectares. Um, so yeah, it tasted quite nice when we bought it and um, well, I'll let you tell me how you think it is. It smells really good. Mm. Oh, cheers. cheers. <laughs> Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, please click like. And if you haven't yet subscribed, could you do that as well, please? You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Or you can find out even more on our website at www.theexpatbutcher.com Yeah, that's the one. Anyway, thanks for watching and we will see you next Sunday evening. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>